my opponent was Finnish Vida Master Eric Ronka. I mean, I don't know him. I played against him some Blitzer Rapid game, maybe before. I had some brief memory. But I have no idea really what to expect from him. So, he has been playing some pretty good chess lately. So I played uh, my beloved Khan system. So those of you who don't know, I, uh, I'm i an author of my chessable course, Life and Repertoire Sicilian Khan. Uh, I know pretty much everything about it. He played 9c3. And now, in the five minute preparation prior to the game, I checked very briefly that after b5, which I recommend in the course, he already had a game. He played bishop d3, bishop b7, show castle, knight c6, knight c6, bishop c6, rook e1, queen b8. And he had already played it. And uh, I felt that it's not right, probably, try to test this line against somebody who already has experience. So I wanted to test something else because once again, I want to win this game. And although I do believe in this line, I wanted to deliver some sort of an element of surprise to kick my opponent out of his comfort zone. So I decided to play Queen C7, which uh, is not what I recommend in my adjustable course. But I did mention this that after bishop d3 you can't really play an out of six because white has a very annoying queen e2 idea of a play e5 and if you play d6 this is just i'm sorry shamaning and this is no longer sicilian con this is something else and uh he played bishop d3 so quickly you know i had a suspicion maybe he has studied my course and I felt, okay, I'm not going to play knight of 6. So what else I can do? And I just had some improvisation here. I decided to play bishop c5, which is one of the common ideas after bishop d3. You're pushing away the knight, and now you have a choice between bishop e7 or bishop a7. And then you play some normal Sicilian. But this is something else. I'll tell you honestly, I had no clue. What is this? Hmm. If he plays something like bishop e3, I play d6, knight f6, I felt I should be okay. He played knight b3. And uh, I don't think I can play bishop a7 here. Or maybe I can. No, I don't think I can do that. Because after queen g4, which is one of the common ideas, the queen on d8 is not guarding the knight. Take it, and I can resign. So it quite doesn't work. And there's this idea without knight c3, queen d8 included, rook g8, bishop f2, knight g4 is an idea later. One of the one of the tricks of the Sicilian Khan. So I play bishop e7. So my idea is to enter some sort of a shamaning in. And use the fact that white knight is pushed away from the center. So this is good for me. That the knight on d4 is very active, so it, if it's pushed away further, it gives me more options and uh, not to miss some immediate threats right away. You play queen g4, which is a good move. And uh, now I realize my posi position stinks. <laughs> now the big point is, I can't play knight of 6. Take, take. I don't have the bishop f2 idea anymore as I showed you in this previous line. And rook g2 just doesn't feel right. I mean, he can play bishop f4, bishop g3, long castle. My rook is stuck. So I can't really do that. If I can't do that, I can play bishop f6, which is one of the ideas. But here I felt it's not going to work because of this very annoying move bishop f4. I don't really want to take on c3 because my dark squares are incredibly weak. So there's no ever, no, no scenario in life I'm going to go for this position. And if I don't do this, um, d6 meets very annoying queen g3. And I have trouble defend upon on d6. So 
I'm missing one tempo. And that's it. I mean, I just don't have a lot of moves here. I mean, bishop e5 is a move, but he just takes it. Long castle f4, I'm just busted. Or maybe just a 4 right away. So again, I mean, I'm completely behind in development. So I decided to play g6. And I was expecting that white is going to play bishop g5, which made the most sense to me. And after d6, take it. I felt that I can try to get some sort of a neither position. I'm solidly worse, but I'm not losing. And I have some chances to take over the game at some stage later. So very unfortunately, uh, I discovered that I can't really play knight of six. Um, the big point is I'm not in time to play d6 and knight e7. I was considering um, a, p a pawn sacrifice h6 and g5 not not very seriously but you have to make sure if it's working but after bishop g5 bishop g5 and queen g3 uh, it doesn't look like i have anything serious any any serious compensation maybe even queen g4 g3 f4 and uh, although i have a very good bishop i have a feeling it's not enough because i'm desperately behind in development So I would have I would have played uh, d6, but here's the thing: he played queen e2, and uh, I realized he's trying to transpose. He's trying to transpose with the same line here, because after uh, bishop d3, bishop c5 here, here, queen g4, g6, you don't have access to bishop g5, but queen e2 is the main move. So black is provoked to pay, play g6 so that after knight f6 there's at some point bishop h6 so that's the idea and uh sort of white loses a tempo but the weakness stays so that makes actually perfect sense but i think my opponent just missed a chance to secure solid advantage with bishop g5 he played queen e2 and now this is pretty normal so I play b6, knight e7. I'm not rushing with knight f6 so that there's no bishop h6. Otherwise, if I play knight f6, this is pretty annoying. I don't know how strong it is, but it's pretty annoying. I mean, I can never castle short and uh, pretty much this forces me either to stay in the center or go for uh, a long castle. So that's why black is waiting for white to play f4. Uh, at the same time, there's ideas to play like b5, bishop b7, and he did play f4. f4, knight f6, g4, pretty strong idea. Uh, otherwise, I'm gonna play h5 myself and try to stop his pawn advancement. I was considering to play h5, but it felt too much. It just felt too much, to be honest. I mean, uh, I didn't feel that this g4 is such a big threat. And this is like inviting white to play something like a five immediately and now i have some weaknesses here so pawn on h5 is actually a waste of time it weakens the g6 square for nothing so i just felt okay this is too much and uh yeah this is where i think i started to go wrong so if i do nothing i just want to show the idea what white has let's say i go for Long cast. I play. Let's say start. Let's start with b6. Why well, play g5 and f5? The idea is not to checkmate me, but the idea is to play f6. I guess I play something like bishop d8, and this knight is completely off the game, and I get a feeling that this is a very dangerous strategic position. So any moment h6, at some point white is going to play h4, of course not to miss the fork. I'm just playing without a knight. And I'm very cramped at a queenside. So I didn't like this idea. And uh, I, But at least according to engine, this is what I should have done it. I should have played b5. g5, knight h5. Now f5, I have a count to play with b4. And he has some difficulties uh, to position the knight. I mean, knight a4 is queen c6. The knight is lost. One of the common ideas of the Sicilian. And something like knight e1 just feels weird, I guess. 
although it's not very clear why i mean maybe i i take it and play something like bishop b7 and knight e5 maybe this is the idea but but to be honest i i don't fully really understand it yeah this is probably like rook f1 knight e5 f6 and bishop f8 uh, he can't play knight f2 because knight f3 or bishop f3 and his king is sort of stuck in the center but so is mine so i have no idea how to evaluate this properly but if he plays a3 this is where angel came up with this insane idea knight b6 f5 and knight f4 the only way how black gets an equal game which is um not very um not very obvious i guess something like take take 92 and i still have this issue right that f6 is a very big threat and yet engine says this is somehow equalish well i i don't know i don't understand this position so much i guess so i decided to play h6 and this is actually not a good move why this is not a good move uh because it weakens the king side too much uh, but the big idea i'm anticipating g5 takes takes knight h5 and now i have a very good e5 square for my knight which actually protects all of the vulnerable squares at the king side so he can't really do that but the bit deep idea is if white improves the idea at some point and plays h4 now i play h5 i lose the tempo but i gain access to the g4 square which i'm not really sure how important is this but at least i close the action at the king side and i reserve the option at some point even castle short because the king side is closed so h6 is a common idea in the sicilian to, to anticipate h4 to prepare to meet it with h5 to anticipate g5 but it just doesn't work right here he played long castle i play b5 he played a3 i play bishop b7 all of these moves make make sort of sense and now the mistake here i guess what i did i should have played g5 which i didn't like but this is once again one of the common themes of um, some um, sicilian rouser positions i sacrifice a pawn to gain access to e5 so let's say takes takes bishop g5 there's knight e5 and i guess i'm happy because i'm gonna play stuff like knight e7 let's say rook g1 maybe at some point at some point maybe not right away like knight e7 i have very good knights i have chances to organize a queenside attack and uh, i'm not sure if these pawns they're doing much for white at least in theory and uh i discarded this because one of the common themes in these positions is to meet this idea with counter strike in the center with e5 take away the e5 square for black this i know from the rouser because takes now white takes it and after bishop g5 guess what i don't have access to knight e5 so i stopped i stopped calculating this but apparently black is doing all right i don't check out this crazy line i play e4 i didn't see this physically at all i didn't see that i'm attacking the pawn on h2 now e4 the bishop on g5 is under attack and now we give a very important check take on h2 and black is doing all right so this was a pretty insane i mean i wasn't even looking towards this direction so i discarded this entire idea of g5 just because i saw e5 i felt that this is very risky for me but the engine and this is really interesting what the engine says in these positions the engine says you have to play f5 not e5 give away the e5 square takes takes 94 now the pawn on e6 is vulnerable bishop c8 at this position i would rate it's 
about unclear because I have a very good piece placement in the center. Engine says white is solidly better after knight of three. Sacrifice opponent g4. Don't care. So very, very aggressive move. But okay, I think actually something like h3 also is very human. And after bishop d7, knight of three. Yeah, I guess I'm slightly worse because I cannot keep the e5 square alive. Yeah, so I didn't play g5. I played rook c8. And um, can you guess? Can you guess the valuation of the position here for white? How much is white better here? Does anybody have any ideas? So we have some sort of uh, Sicilian Scheveningen with weirdness of uh, h6, g6. It, it's not a standard position. This is a standard position with a pawn on g7. Plus 2.2. Plus 0 0.5. Actually, you know, plus 2.2 is very close to the truth. I switch on the engine after the game. Engine says plus 2 for white. Plus 2. What does it mean? White is strategically winning. I would never tell. I would never tell because I felt that this position is incredibly complex. I mean, I knew I'm worse. There's no secret. I knew I'm worse, but I was trying to risk uh, to win something. And uh, on space from Jeremy Sermon. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. White has a lot of space to launch. But again, I mean, look at the position more closely. So obviously white guys face the advantage. Black has some issues to place the king. But think about the position more closely. What do you do? Because if you play e5, you weaken the d5 square, right? I just take, take, and play knight e5. And this pawn on e5 maybe is a weakness. Okay, maybe I can just take it right away. But it's a weakness. What do you do? If you play f5, which is the right move, but it gives away the e5 square. So I could even play some typical Sicilian positions like e5. And now these pieces, they're not attacking. F takes, F takes, and the position. I felt it's rather unclear. Engine says plus three for white. I mean, I guess because of these pawns, I, I didn't understand it at all. Just plus three. Uh, if white plays g5, I take it. Again, the same idea. I gain access to d5 square. Not very obvious, right? If Y plays H4, I play H5. Again, G5 is 9G4. So you look at this position and uh, you can understand why White had major difficulties to understand. I mean, which pawn push should he do? And uh, F5 is still the right move, but it gives away the E5 square. And I would say that you simply have to understand it. I mean, you, if you don't have the prior understanding that f5 is good, it's it's a difficult choice to make it. I tell you honestly, it is a very difficult choice. And he did play king b1, which was a good move. Uh, just in case, remove the king from some checks, etc. And uh, I felt that this is the moment when I should try to uh, take over the game try to risk it all and I play 9b6 which again is a bit suicidal move but the problem is again I don't have any good legal moves show castle is suicide uh, g5 is wait what was I think actually here e5 works because take take I'm sorry take 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 I'm sort of not having this check on f4 anymore, which, okay, I physically didn't see this at all. I just discarded this here. I, I felt that this is just not a good position. I didn't see this rook h2 idea at, at all. Um, if I play e5, this was my idea. Try to close the center. f5, g5, close. And then do some, some sort of a queen set attack with, with our b5, b4 push. He has a very annoying g5 threat. 
And now I don't have access to my 95 anymore. Do you remember? I told you about this 95. Takes, takes, not H5, and there's 95. So I have to take. And the big problem, I don't have access to knight f4. Because if I would have access to knight f4, I would play this, I think. Knight f4 takes, takes, and knight e5. But the problem is the maiden, maiden 1 on e7. So I can't do that. And he's going to play knight e2, knight e4, and just dominate me on all the squares. And the king is still weak. So I can't do that. And I, I look at this, and I'm just... I don't have a lot of choice, right? Something like d5 here is incredibly risky because my king is in the center and of course he will open the position take it and even if i get a good structure this is just a free attack for white right and now i regret having these pawns on on g6 and h6 because if there would be standing on g7 h7 short castle i'm doing fine but they're standing on g6 h6 So I played knight b6, and my idea was to play knight c4, and this was actually a provocation, because once again he has to cocklet many lines. Uh, he has to cocklet e5, he has to cocklet f5, he has to cocklet g5, he has to cocklet some sacrifices. I was cocklating lines like knight b5, I'm sorry, bishop b5, knight b5, now this knight is under attack. Queen c6 is knight a7, queen d8, e5, and I come 95. So I sort of uh, made sure that this is working for me. The knight tried to calculate e5, and now he sacrifices a piece. Take, take. And now we don't have queen d8. But what I do, I found queen c4. After bishop b6, queen e2, I have bishop f3. <coughs> which I believe is winning for, for black. So I was pretty, pretty happy to find this idea. And he still should have played f5, but he resorted to e5. Take, take. Knight e5. Take. I guess I have to take with the knight, which... Made a lot of sense. Engine says maybe bishop d5, knight c4 is an idea. They honestly have no clue. I mean, all of them look pretty normal to me. And now I realized it's still not over. Because it's again very difficult to make the next move. While white's idea is very simple. Rook f1, rook f2, rook f1, go for the king's side attack. Something bound to happen there. Knight e4, sacrifice on g6, knight e6 ideas, there, there. So what do I do? And I'm thinking, maybe I can play b4. b4, he's gonna close the action, I play knight b6. And the idea was that if I can provoke him to play into something like knight c4 and care about the pawn on a5, then I'm doing awesome. Yeah, this is a great position. Because I have great bishops, my king is safe, now nothing is threatening, bishop d5 next, and uh, I'm just dominating the position. So that's pretty great. But here's the thing. He doesn't have to, uh, he doesn't have to protect the pawn on a4. And if he plays something like knight e4, I realize that these threats are too much. Although the engine says queen d7, chill. I didn't see this move physically at all, bishop a6, and there's some complete mess, which I'm not going to elaborate. I, I just don't play like that. So I can't play b4. I play bishop g5. Good idea to go for some counter attack. I want to play bishop d2, g5, and knight f4, secure an outpost on f4 for the knight, so that my king is feeling a bit more secure. He played rook f1, which is a good move. And now, uh, again, this is a very important moment. Uh, I felt that I need to remind white that there's some issues with his king. Because my opponent was low on time. He was having something like 5 minutes on the clock after 21 moves being made. And I had maybe 25. I had more. And I realized if I'm going to play safe and solid, like uh, queen e7, short castle. I'm just gonna give my opponent free attack, right? Everything jumps forward at a, at a king side. 
So I felt that I need to remind my opponent that he needs to worry about his king's safety as well. So I was very happy about this move, queen b6, which comes with two ideas. Now, one idea is the obvious b4, knight c3. Maybe in some lines it's threatening, but, but the guy's down on five minutes. He can't really guess. He has to understand it. Is that a threat or not? Or the second idea is something on e3. Either take and play queen e3 or even knight e3 right away. So that was pretty good. He, it extracted a couple of minutes from the opponent. He played rook e1, which is a good move. And uh, I realized I'm running out of moves. I have no moves. Because bishop d2 is knight e2. Knight e4, this is looking like a disaster. b4, he just plays a4. I have no follow-up. There's no knight c3 sacrifices. I can't castle, because castle is going to be h4. This is suicide. I'm just running under a direct attack. I realized I want to run to the to the queen side, but how do I do it? How do I make the king run to b8? Rook c7 would be a nice idea, but there's bishop a5. I can't take on d2 and then play rook c7 because he takes with the knight. Um, I can't play a5 because he plays bishop b5. I was like, wait a second, I'm running out of moves here. And uh, I was thinking, okay, I could repeat the position. Bishop h4, rook d1, bishop g5. And there's a fair chance that my position, my opponent would agree to a draw because I'm nominally much stronger and I'm much ahead on the clock. But it just didn't feel right. So I decided to go all in. I play bishop c6, which is the only legal move basically I have. And I'm still threatened b4. Now there's no a4 because now this pawn is under attack. Now this move made clearly my opponent nervous. <coughs> and uh, he played c3, which is not a good move. And this is what I exactly wanted. But now, now I have a question to you. Can you pick up the strongest... I'm sorry, wait, was this? Yeah, move before. Sorry, it was here. Without uh, rook e1, bishop c6. Can you pick up the strongest plan for white according to the engine? Can you do this? Go. I mean, if you're gonna pick it up, you have my eternal respect. Think about a plan. Bishop a5 and c4. <laughs> Actually, that is pretty close. That is pretty close. But uh, bishop a5 allows me to play queen e3. I want to trade queens. I want to. I mean, I beg for the queen trade. And uh, I don't think he can do that. I mean, queen g2 is knight c3. He loses the queen. Actually, the same applies for queen f3. There's knight c3. Queen f2. I trade the queen, so I'm very happy. I'm very happy. h4. Okay, but what about h4? So h4, I'm going to take it. Then what? I mean, when I saw this in a post-game game analysis, my eyes are like this. I mean, I was like completely shocked. This is like for somebody who sees the entire board. G5. <laughs> no, I mean, G5 is a nice idea, but Bishop G5. No, 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 no. But there's actually something with H4. Yeah, something with H4. It's not very obvious, right? Because this is not how people think. You see h4, and you don't see the follow-up. Yeah, there is rook h1, of course, with the idea that uh, after bishop g5, uh, there's bishop g5. But now, I can at least play queen f2, right? I'm doing all right. Or even if I want, I can play bishop e7. I mean, okay, you take an h6, so be it, right? So this is not the same idea. Uh, no, 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 not the right continuation. And again, people, they don't see a follow-up. They discard it. Knight c3. Bishop e1, bishop f2. You mean here? No, bishop e1, I trade queens. I think he needs to avoid a queen trade at all because the big difference is... Here, ah, h4 and bishop e1. <laughs> oh, I mean, I, I take it. So be it. 
So take it, and I still have my counter play here, and I can play rook c7 run by the king on b8. No, I think this is actually pretty good for me. This is pretty good for me. Okay, he might play the same idea of knight e2, knight e4. I could, by the way, play g5 for knight e4. Now, remember, this was my idea, right? Put the knight on a 4 close the file. You want rook f7? Well, rook f7 is, of course, very tempting. But uh, I don't think there's any single line where rook f7 is working. Yeah, rook f uh, it definitely is an idea. Rook f7, king f7, uh, some check, and bishop g6, but you're just not having enough pieces to go for the attack. Okay, I'm going to show you, because you're never going to pick it up. I mean, this is nuts. So, the, the strongest plan for what? h4 uh, i'm sorry yeah h4 now i take the pawn on h4 what <laughs> what's the idea i mean who thinks like that even so not a5 so you still try to understand what's the big idea of this move uh okay but there, let's let me just let me just make a move bishop a8 and now you play c4 you get it? So the big point is b takes knight c4. <laughs> this is a different way how the knight gets on uh, b6, d6. And uh, I don't show why h4 is necessary. I guess knight a5. I can take on d2. And uh, I could have a check on c3. I think so. I mean, something along the, along the lines of knight c3, b takes queen a5. And uh, now... The, the knight on a5 is under attack, so the entire idea is to lure away the bishop from attacking white's bishop, then play knight a5. Um, and understand that c4 is an inevitable threat. Well, welcome to the 25th century. I mean, I don't know how to call this, because this is not how people think. This is not how people think. You don't play at a king side. To play the next move at the queen side to make the strike in the center this is very very rare you know uh, you have to like control the entire board and this is very rare motive to play something at the king side in order to open some things at the queen side it's super super rare i i don't even think this is so easy to pick up and um uh, yeah maybe you can play bishop e7 yeah again uh totally is a move and you need to evaluate this i think tension was saying something like Take, take, bishop e4. <laughs> okay. I mean, this is one of those moments when you look at these lines and it's like, okay, okay. I have so much to learn. I have so much to learn still. So he didn't pick this up. He played uh, rook e1, bishop c6. And um, what did he play here? c3. And uh, after c3, this is like an invitation to go for an attack, and I did. a5. And now he was in total time trouble. I felt this is the right moment to strike. I want to take over the game. He played knight e4. And uh, yeah, okay, this was a very, very critical moment. Should I take on d2? Or should I play b4? Immediately. I couldn't really make it up. What's the big difference? So I decided to take on d2, which is... A slight inaccuracy, I guess b4 was immediately stronger. But there's so many complex lines. I mean, he's threatening knight c6 and bishop b5. So my idea was that I'm taking on d2 so that at least I'm removing this idea to play bishop b5. Now, I did play b4. c4 is knight c3 check. I'm winning something. b takes, b takes is exposed king. He played... Queen f2, which was a good move. But actually, knight c6 would lead to some mess. And now, I can't really take here with the rook. c4 is very strong. Knight c3 just is king a1. And what do I do next, right? I have no attack. My king is still weak, by the way. And I was thinking that I could take on c3. He plays queen f2. Very sharp. Again, I can't take on f2, play rook c6, do to bishop b5. I take here. Check. <laughs> here. And I felt that I'm going to have a very strong attack. But actually, I love the evaluation of the engine. The engine says this is totally equal. 
Queen B3 with a C2 check, Knight C3 ideas, Queen A7, a Rook C2, Rook B6, Queen A7 equal. <laughs> Total equal position. I mean, okay. So he didn't do that. He played Queen F2. I castle. And now you see the character of the game has changed. It has changed. Yeah, hello, Procrew. Yeah, it's equal. Because I'm the one who is attacking, not white. I mean, a couple of moves ago it was white attacking, now it's me. I have managed to play a short castle, my king is safe. And this is where some very crazy lines start. Um, he played c4, the best move. And uh, I decided to go all in. So I, I took on a3. Because I don't really have a choice. Because once again, knight c3. I didn't see the follow-up after b takes, b takes, and king of one. I physically didn't see what I'm going to do next. It felt that he has some, I have some compensation, but I can't play rook d8, attack this knight, because there's always queen of seven. Very annoying. I don't think I want to play this rook to d8 to attack these pieces. And if I don't do anything immediately, I'm just losing on the spot after knight b5. And that's why I decided to play b takes on a3. And now... He, uh, he took on d5, but there's also this move knight c6. Now this leads again to some crazy mess, because I was thinking to play knight c3 check, which actually is a slight mistake. And my big idea was after king a1, queen c6, I'm winning. I'm sorry, no. A takes on b2, queen b2, queen c6, I'm winning. Why is this? Because queen c3, check, check. I felt that there's going to be a killing attack. I mean, rook b8, queen a3, you name it. I mean, he's definitely going to lose material here. And I didn't believe that white can survive this attack. And of course, engine, after the game, it confirmed that this is killing. But what's really odd, that after knight x on c6, knight c3, he has to play king a1, king c1. And this is a draw, somehow. I mean, I was stunned. And uh, I can repeat the position, knight a2, king b1, knight c3, king c1. Or continue to play for more after queen c3, b takes, and rook b8. Which is a complete mess. I have no idea how to evaluate this. There's rook b2, a2. Engine says, equal. It's equal. So what do I understand, right? And actually the strongest move after knight c6 is queen c6. And this apparently is a very strong attack, but I tell you honestly, not very obvious to me. Not very obvious. Right, there's rook e2, where's even your attack, and you're still down a piece, right? And somehow engine says this is better for black. Okay, might be. Yeah, I don't know, I mean, some draw. Uh, he took on d5, which was very human. Bishop d5, and now he made a very bad mistake. I mean, king a1 in time trouble, completely panicked. Um, I have a threat of, um, I, I mean, I have some threats like rook b8, rook b8, expose the king, queen a4, queen a1, my king is secure, and he had to play knight b5, and actually, I tell you honestly, in the game, I physically did not see the move queen b8, I did not see this at all, this is the strongest move, I only saw rook c5. And after knight a3, I didn't see the follow-up. Because I can't play queen b3 because the rook is ganging. And I can't play rook c8 because there's queen f7. So I think I would have picked, picked it up. Uh, I would have picked it up. Uh, queen b8. Now knight a3 loses because this is inevitable. And he's just hanging a lot of things. And uh, b takes is crushing due to bishop c4. And he's losing a piece. He's losing, yeah? So there's no way to defend it. I don't remember what was the line here. Maybe some positional a4. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, uh, the king is exposed and there's got to be something, right? Uh, not very obvious, tell you honestly. But the strongest move, according to the engine, is g5. Right? So what's, what's even g5? So you take it. Some rookie tree. Who even thinks like that? You take it, 
And queen f6. And there's the idea. Rook h3 is a big myth idea. And now after a check, you still play rook c8, you still play g4. And there's perpetual. How do you like that? I mean, uh, I'm looking at this and I realize I'm a complete noob. Yeah, I don't understand a thing. I mean, I'm looking at these engine lines and I'm just like, what is this? Yeah, who plays even like g5? After queen b8, queen a7? No, it's not a stupid question. It's actually a very normal move. Maybe I just uh, maybe I just take on b2. Maybe I just take on b2? Queen b8, rook b8, but... What is this position? I, I don't understand. Tell you honest, I don't understand. Actually, queen a7 makes perfect sense. Um, I didn't see this. Yeah, queen a7 makes perfect sense. I agree. Yeah, I agree. But also, b8 needs to be cocked. Either way, I mean, there's a, such a complete mess that he just played king a1 uh, not not willing to play knight b5, and this loses by force. Yeah. So I play queen b4, and now this is a killing attack. That's it. He has no way to escape. Because now I'm threatening to take and queen f4 check, and there's no b3 because of queen c3. That's it. So he could have played rook c1. And this is just killing, yeah? Knight b5, b4, everything collapses, the queen side collapses, and uh, the knight on b5 loses support, so he can't really do that. And he just played... Uh, he played rook b1, which is just dropping a piece immediately. Rook b2, queen a3. There you go. So it's very easy to make a mistake, and uh, the game was super sharp, but I feel that... I feel that the critical moment... The critical moment which allowed me to take over the game was this move queen b6 because again i think it's very important especially when your opponent is time in time trouble that you try to scare your opponent off some counter attack and every single player in the world they're seeing ghosts they're seeing something which is not there everybody's super concerned right so that's why this queen b6 is so much better idea than queen e7 because you're not creating threats with queen e7 so he did play rook e1 and after bishop c6 he was so confused uh with a couple of times couple of minutes on the clock that he saw that b4 is such a big threat he was unable to pick up h4 insane idea h4 bishop h4 knight a5 <laughs> idea with c4 or even things like that and he played c3 which now starts a complete mess at the queen side so once again maybe he was doing the right but in time trouble it's so much easier obviously to attack right so this is what i was doing and uh, and after a couple of moves after a couple of adventures not b5 of course had to be played but eventually he erred he made a mistake in a very difficult position king a1 actually is pretty human move pretty human move if you ask me you'll go away from the pin but queen b4 just that's it you're done 